Mario, I want to ask you another question. I want to ask you um, how to make connections, inspire, and level up in 11 minutes. Uh, I think this is something that it, this is a custom question tailored just for you. It's true because um, so I've come up with this kind of philosophy that you can really get through to people that you normally wouldn't have a great shot at maybe getting through to if you ask for for it in a different way. And if we reframe the question of the ask, we could get more yeses to potentially happen. And so that's what I was really trying to experiment with. And then I started doing certain things that were actually working in that lane. And I'm like, okay, this isn't really an experiment. This is actually a formula. I need to understand this formula and share this with others. So I call it, you know, asking ask threes and ask for 11 minutes only. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because if you ask, we have really beat up asking for someone's time so bad. So the last time someone said, hey, can I get five minutes? to talk to you about something, they never last five minutes, <laughs> right? Sure. Like they, they end up running like a 60 minute marathon and you were like, this is supposed to be five minutes. Like everybody can relate to someone saying, can I get a few minutes of your time? And it just stretches sure. beyond. I've and, done that myself. <laughs> yeah, we're all been guilty of it. Guilty. Right? We, <laughs> so when you say to someone, can I have 11 minutes of your time? Mm -hmm. Instantly you're different because you're also not just saying five, 10, 15, 20, or 30. Number one, we ask for too much time for people. Most of the time we don't need 30 minutes or an hour. That's mm -hmm. going to decrease yeah. the amount of yeses you get if you ask for more time. It's more commitment on their part. Ask for just enough. To get in the door is the point. To establish a relationship is the point. Not to slam dunk the whole idea in 11 minutes. That's not the goal. The goal is, can we at least start a conversation? And so by yes. asking for 11 minutes, they are more inclined to say yes for several reasons. One, it's a smaller amount of time to be asking. Two, it's unique and different, so it catches their attention. And three, it kind of makes them interested in you because you're asking for something that people don't normally ask for. Yes. And they think that you respect time and they think that you're gonna really respect their time. And so those are all reasons why it helps to open up that door. So whether it's in an email or whether it's a DM and social media or my favorite doing videos uh, for that ask, whatever it is, just just try with 11 minutes first. Someone listened to me in the audience recently. You were there, Brooke, and she pulled me up after the speech and she says, I just did it via text. I've been trying to get to this woman for like three weeks. And I just did, and she knows me, I have her cell number, but she hasn't been responding to any of my other emails. I asked for 11 minutes via text and she said, yes, sure. <gasps> it blew me away. Like the woman acted like in, she was still in, the, the event was still happening. Like I just got off the stage and maybe like, I don't know, oh an hour later gosh. tell me what she just did on the spot and that it worked. And I was like, I need your testimonial. I shot video of her on the spot for her to explain exactly what took place. It's just yes. something magical about that kind of ask that people really um, see it as something unique and different that they'll give you a shot. I love that. And hey, I use it on you and here you are. You did, you <laughs> so did. let's just say it works. <laughs> you did use it on me. <laughs> and you know, if you really wanna get into like the, you know, the power of numbers, 11 is a really great number. Ones are really great numbers. Um, so there's some of that energy that can go along with it as well. But that's why asking for that can help. I hope that really increases you all getting a more of a yes. And then the key is once you do get the 11 minutes, to really make the 11 minutes about trying to learn as much about them as possible versus you pitching your idea in 11 minutes. Yeah, consolidating your yes. thoughts and your questions, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah because the idea is that you're gonna come back. This is only the beginning. That's the, the, the whole idea is like, don't uh, look at this, it's like the one shot. This is the beginning, so. Not a one stop. That's right. Shot. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I think like we can relate that to um, this podcast, Ali. I mean, yeah. Ali came to me and he's like, I'm going to do these short podcasts. We're going to call it a webisode series. Um, and it like wasn't really being done when we first started. I'm like, mm. what, what is this? Like, is this a <laughs> podcast? Is this like, is this some, what is this? Yeah, and it was I love different, it. just like you said, Mario. And it caught people's attention because you're not giving too much. You're giving bite-sized chunks. So like you're listening bite-sized, we're giving bite-sized and that's people's attention spans these days. 
-hmm. in that fast, like millennial moving YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. I mean, this is where all these shorts are coming in. So yeah. it's kind of happening around us. Yeah, it's uh, it's that short form uh, version in, that, in this new transient society, right? The dopamine seeking world, especially for the youth. Um, it's it, the question was, how can we relay our message that fits this type of new structure? Mm. Um, it might not be the same as like a three hour long podcast, but you're, you, it, some people aren't going to sit down and listen or watch a three hour long podcast. They're going to only listen to five minutes, 10 minutes, 11 minutes, those shorter numbers. They're going to give the yes to that via right. their phone, wherever they are. It's shorter, it's quicker. And we live in a much more transient society. I mean, Mario, you were talking about it. People don't have time sometimes. So, you know, whatever can get that point across um, short and sweet. And yeah, I because it really helps know. with. No, I think that it really helps with communication skills, too. It so does. with the point across, you have to get your thoughts together rather than all that extra fluff that people don't really care about. It's like reading a book. Of, OK, just give me the nuggets. Like, that's all I really care about. Take me yeah. to the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. At, and it's funny. I was about we were jumping on at the same time because I was going to say the exact same thing. There's so much fluff in a lot of things. And if that's what you want to do, I'm not here to judge that if that's, if that's what your thing is, then that's your thing. That's fine. But don't feel like you have to write 300 pages in order for it to be an effective book, just because other books are 300 or 400 pages. We need to rewrite some of these rules and break a lot of these rules because what's happening is we're in a sea of normalcy with a lot of other things that feel, look and feel the same because of these rules and programs that have been written. I was listening to um, Chris Doe, which is a great podcaster and um, I was listening to his podcast and he was interviewing somebody talking about creativity and, and it, it really comes back to when we were like our youngest self and we didn't understand that the stove is hot. Like we didn't know we were going to learn that, but if we, we had no fears except for losing our parents. That was the only thing. That's the only security we needed. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. And you can do this as adults. You can really decide that I'm not going to do and conform to what everyone else is doing. You're doing it with yes. what you, you're an example of that. We're going to do an 11 minute ish podcast. We're going to have a conversation with our guests longer than 11 minutes, but then we're going to chop this up into multiple episodes that fit that time frame. I do a podcast called wake up and level up the podcast. Wake up and level up is contextually less than five minutes three days a week it. and its sole purpose is to wake up and level you up mm -hmm. if i can get my message across in 90 seconds i'm done i'm not hanging on there for another four minutes just because if if i felt the message that i needed to get to you and it's done in 60 get on with your day it's done in absolutely. 60. absolutely <laughs> so yeah and that's I, why like when 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 bosses are like, oh, I'm going to give you your 10 minutes back from this meeting, our, our meeting is over. So go get, you know, like there's not always a need <laughs> for a one hour meeting or a 30 minute meeting or a mm -hmm. 30 minute. Yeah. It's just, you can get your point across. And then if you need more time, it's like going on a date, you go on another date. <laughs> our default in our company is 25 minute meetings. That's the default. I you can't that. book us for longer than 25 minutes, unless it's something specific or goal oriented or, you know, a retreat day, but it forces people to really think what's the most important thing we need to talk about today. And how can I voice that? Yeah. yeah I mean, we were talking about it earlier, just, um, we were talking about how to, how to reach your goals, small chunks, right? Um, these are small chunks right here, the shorter meetings, the shorter, clips, whatever it may be, even, you know, what you were saying earlier, Mario, uh, 300, pa uh, you know, 300 page, you know, uh, whatever you want to write, it could be shorter. It's smaller chunks. You can get it done in smaller chunks. And uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's the more, it's, it's accustomed to this new trends in um, world that, that we live in for sure. The yeah. psychology behind I it. mean, I had an author literally tell me, <sighs> I wish I could tell you who this is. Cause you'd be like, what? <laughs> he went through that. <laughs> He was like, man, you won't believe this. Like my copy is in for my book and my draft is done. And the publisher's like, you need 40 more pages. And I'm like, 
Wait, what? To talk about what? <laughs> like, you need 40 more pages? He's like, yeah, no, because, you know, we don't have it. enough page number. We don't have enough pages. In a, we need four. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> He's like, man, I don't know what I'm going to write. I'm going to figure it out. And I'm sure he did great. But now I'm reading his book and I'm wondering what 40 pages are the fluff that I'm now reading. <laughs> that, oh, that my in. gosh. Go on Blinkus. Don't read his book. Just get to the nuggets. <laughs> Go on <Blinkist>. Right? <laughs> Blinkist, right? That's why there's an app for this. Hey, look, that's but why when I, like, I do Kindle and then I make all my all my notes from a book right in, right in ooh. Kindle and I print it out. <laughs> there you go. Then, like, there this you becomes go. Like, like, this becomes even a shorter Blinkist. Than... Yeah, I'm going to just pay Mario when he reads. He's just going to give me the cliff notes. It's going to be the Mario notes. <laughs> but D Donald Miller, he is an expert marketing um, person and sales. He does marketing made simple, sales made simple, message made simple, right? business made it's, simple. Yeah. Business made simple. Right. I mean, he literally has these bite sized chapters of information that people can digest. I guarantee you there is no page number that he needs for his books. And that's what makes right. him so effective because yeah. it's simple, clear, and to the point. We want to know what we're reading soon, quick, get us there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah unless... it, 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 it could be used as a tool, right? We, we talk about tips and tools all the time. Um, social media, shorter form videos, longer form videos, it's a tool. For example, let's, let's name a, a car, for example. If you don't know how to use it, um, it it's not going to go well. But if you do know how to use it, it will go well. And that goes for social media and everything. And the same thing. So um, it, it's, and, and it, it's accustomed to different people. Mario, you were saying earlier that you're, you're visual right mm -hmm. or are, are not visual some people are verbal they they like to you know hear things and speak about things right that's right learn. so it's everyone learns differently an adhd -er might have some difficulty uh staying fo um, you know like the word focused staying <laughs> concentrated or paying attention right yeah, so, yeah. and you know th it's these things are you know everyone learns a little bit differently and it's uh, it's kind of uh, tailored to different folk and it, it really is a tool depending on how you use it that's that's right and everything is an we all have assets it's yeah. just a matter of how do you frame it if you are being taught that your adhd is a problem and you start be beginning to believe what other people are saying then you too will start to think that it's a disadvantage i know plenty of people who are definitely adhd because they've told me that they have figured out who they are and how it's an advantage to them Mm -hmm. And the difference is we all have these things. So whether I'm better at communicating visually, then I, I stink at like writing. It's tough for me to do. I can do it, but it's tough. But you get a camera in front of me, I'm going to go and connect in some way that's different where other people are like, don't ever put a camera on me. You know, I prefer to only have intimate meetings. So and like the Oz right behind the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Understanding that what someone may look at or categorize as a disadvantage is clearly not that. It mm -hmm. means you have a heightened ability in something else that you probably yes. know or you should be maximizing because that is your gift and it was given to you. You weren't given a problem. You were given an opportunity. Yes, yes. We're and we're so, like, we could probably talk forever um, about this topic because I know we're all so passionate about it. We all have ADHD or suspected ADHD, and we've been met with challenges. We've been told to conform to a certain way of being and as mm -hmm. being a certain student um, and not harnessing our unique abilities um, because, you know, people weren't taught that way. Um, so I think it's fantastic that, you know, you are a superstar, Mario, and you are here to send that message, right? To send that message that it's okay to be different, but just figure out what makes you unique. And it's not that you're even, I would take it a step further if I could. I would say yes and, um, like they do in improv, yes and. I don't like the word, but speaking of words, I don't like the word but. <laughs> because I feel like there's nothing ever good on the other side of the but, right? It's usually yeah. something negative. So yes and, I would say that it's not even that you are different. 
in the in the respect of like being different. It's that we are all just different. Mm-hmm. And different. We, we are all different. We're <laughs> all just different. And then what it is is, well, the thing that comes to you naturally is maybe the thing that you are underestimating as your superpower. Yes. And it yes. could and very well be the thing you got bullied over when you were a child, because that's yes. normally the thing that other people recognize that that they're projecting their insecurities onto you. But it becomes so much that you think it's an insecurity, so then you hide from it. But it's in fact the thing that makes you so unique and special. Mm-hmm. So when we yes. think about what comes to us easy, if you're listening and you're like, I have things that come to me easy, but I, since they come to me easy, I don't think there's any value in it. It's the opposite. You're you're prescribing to the fact that, oh, since it comes easy, it's not a lot of work. Therefore, I didn't work hard for it. Therefore, it's got no value. And that's not true. We were all given gifts that were supposed to come to us easy. We now have to work on those gifts. But if you assume that the gift has no value, you're not going to work on it. So many of you are kind of going through some portion of your life right now, not really maximizing your fullest potential because you're disregarding the very thing that's right in front of your face that makes you powerful. And if you don't know what that is, ask your friends, what makes me special? Ask your family and friends, what makes me unique? And if you wanna use the word different because they understand it, what makes me different? And when you see what actually comes back to you, you're gonna be like, that thing? That's it. That I see yes. every day. <laughs> You're gonna yes. realize that's what's Mario's. That's where the value is. Yes. I love that. I love like the question. Ask people who you trust and you value what other people say about you when you leave the room. Doesn't have to be negative. It doesn't have to be positive. It doesn't have to be right. It doesn't have to be wrong. But like, what do people not say to your face, but they yeah. say about you? And then take that in. And then, of course, what what do you like about me? What are my strengths? Um, those kind of things, because we we have such a hard time seeing us as we our do. strengths. And our childhood has so many clues. Yes, but we've yes. like put it away or we tucked those it away. Those missed opportunities. Yes. Yeah, we come from different families, different family orientations, different cultures, different troubles. And uh, all these, I mean, you know, this is where our abilities are derived from, right? Our, our past experiences and. Um, it, it, you said it earlier, um, we, we might not know much about our gifts because sometimes we're too busy dissecting failure versus dissecting our gifts and positives and successes, right? So um, getting that external opinion, what makes me special is important because we do, as humans, tend to compare ourselves to other people versus ourselves, going back to that old thing, the classic uh, uh, quote I was saying, compare yourself to who you were yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Festinger, I think is his name, did a study in, I think it's 1967, but you can look it up. It's called the social comparison theory. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this was a thing until we did a show on it. And I knew comparison was a thing, but I didn't know it was an actual theory that we compare in one of two ways. We compare upwards for things that inspire us. Mm -hmm. And then we compare downwards to make us feel better. Mm -hmm. And so that's a slippery slope one, of course, like comparing yourself downwards to, to someone else that's doing less than you to make you feel better is not good energy, negative, everything else that goes with that. Comparing yourself upwards to someone that inspires you, as long as that doesn't become envy or jealousy, that can be a good thing. But ultimately, comparing yourself to what you did yesterday, <laughs> like today, I, you know, I've, I butted heads with my CEO and I'm like, yeah, I kind of should have been a little bit Nicole, better with the Nicole, Nicole, go away. Look- we have a Nicole going on in Florida right now. Go away. Nicole, <laughs> CEO, go away. Come back tomorrow. We'll be better so, then. <laughs> so tomorrow I'm going to be better. I'm going to compare myself today and say, all right, I said that. I said that much better this time.